Right, I've got something pretty special for you today. Look at this, rare and special. The Aston Martin V12 Speedster. Very rare car, only 88 of these were made. Uh, and the story goes that a friend of mine, whose car this is, gave me a call saying, listen, the car's been in the garage too much. Uh, I want it to go out for a drive. Do you mind taking it out for a little drive? So we're gonna go on a POV drive in the Speedster. Good on him also for actually taking the car out and wanting it to be enjoyed and not having it as a garage queen. I imagine a few of the 88s are going to be garage queens, so really happy to see one of these cars actually getting used. He drives it around quite a lot when he's around. So yeah, anyways, awesome. We're going to have a really good time with this. Let's have a little look around the exterior before you go on my forehead and we actually go for a drive. This one's in this really cool, obviously F1 inspired livery, so you got the fluorescent yellow on the F1 green. And I hope this comes across on camera, but it's like a really nice metallic green. Comes out really nicely when it's in the sun. The whole bodywork is carbon fiber. So you can get little clues, like here, the carbon, right here. Obviously the main talking point of this is the fact that there's no roof or windshield. It's a total speedster look. This seemed to somehow suddenly become a fashion. The Sterling Moss was, I guess, the first to do it. Then there was the Monza, the Elva, and this. Comment down below which one you'd have of all of those. But yeah, this one, I just think the spec and the overall look of it, they look cool on camera. I always thought the proportions were slightly odd in, in photos, but when you have one in front of you, it looks absolutely stunning. You've got these center locking, diamond cut wheels. Again, this one's got the fluorescent brake calipers, which also look really, really nice. We'll talk about what's under the hood and stuff in a little bit. Carbon everywhere, massive carbon side sills with the little yellow details. On the interior, so it's got these doors, the Aston doors that kind of come up at an angle. Swan doors, I think is the official name. You can see it there, really coming up at an angle. These seats, I think, are gorgeous. So first of all, Everything's like leather straps. All of the detailing around the interior is beautiful. You're completely surrounded by carbon. Look at this. And the seats, so they are in this material which is water resistant, weather resistant, not just water. So in theory, you can you know, drive this car and if it does start raining, you don't need to stress too much. It's made for it. But I have to admit, I don't think you'd ever take this out if you knew there was a chance of rain. Um, I sit quite far forward, as you can tell, but the seat beautifully kind of just fits in to uh, the, I think these are probably like little roll cage, pieces of the roll cage to be able to protect you. Um, really nice interior, obviously just all decked out in carbon fiber. So full carbon fiber door with the little holes here for your speakers, which looks really nice. You've got these little Aston Martin straps. Again, you know, fairly sporty, but just classily done. Um, really nice, so green leather. This one's got green leather all over it. Awesome looking, carbon all over the place. Um, we'll get back to the interior in a little bit. I'll just show you the rest of the car. So you have a huge diffuser now, massive diffuser, full carbon fiber diffuser. Really like this uh, yellow detail as well. Ooh, <laughs> gotta put this door away before someone smashes into it. He obviously wasn't too worried about it. Anyways, diffuser is huge and it hides this new exhaust system with the two big exhaust outlets. Really nice looking. You can get a Quicksilver exhaust system on these. I know Sam Seen Through Glass did a video with one uh, that I think had the um, Quicksilver exhaust system. You've got a huge spoiler actually. So aerodynamically, it looks like they've worked it so that the air comes through here and then they've dropped this down from the rear deck lid and boot, which we'll look at in a bit, so that it kind of naturally integrates this nice spoiler, which in itself is integrating your third brake light right there. So yeah, really nice design and obviously reminiscent of the Vantage lights, just they've done it in its own way, which is pretty cool. Now, if I can get the key out of my pocket, I can show you what the boot looks like. So first of all, one really cool detail is you've got two carbon fiber helmets which are custom made for each speedster um, and strapped in there and they've actually just made this part glass so you can see and it's a really nice detail gives it that real racing look because obviously this has inspired this car speaking of racing the main inspiration is the 1959 le mans winning dbr1 aston martin 
So they wanted to, you know, arc back to that, having the helmet is necessary if you're gonna be driving fairly fast. I'm actually not gonna put the helmets on today. I've got sunglasses and well, for now I've got this cap, but then you guys are gonna be on my head, so I won't be able to wear the cap. But uh, I don't know if there is actually a radio system to be able to chat to each other um, between driver and passenger when you're in, in the car. What I love is how everything is carbon fiber. You do get a little bit of boot space. You don't wanna put anything too rough in here because it is all beautiful green carbon as well. So. Up, we close that up. There we go, and we can keep looking around the interior. So, interior-wise, as we hop in, you got this nice. So, see, that's the DBR1, and that's the Speedster. Nice little detail showing what the inspiration for this car was. You've even got carbon fiber kind of styled floor mats. Up, uh, we hop in. These seats are pretty high up on the side here, so you kind of need to jump over them. Once you're in, you're completely cocooned. Look at this. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a spaceship. So you've got this kind of bridge design, which in itself is carbon fiber between the driver and the passenger. The passenger actually gets, if we hop under here, there you go, kind of like a, a glove box, but very classily done glove box. Actually, let me just put that back in place properly, like that, there you go. Full leather pouch glove box. That is very cool. And then, if we come back under, you get all of the kind of classic Aston Martin stuff. So the steering wheel that you recognize from the DBS Superleggera and DB11 um, with all the buttons on here. Nice to have actual buttons. Um, the digital dash. So this is very much pre-DB12, uh, new DBX, uh, new Vanquish and all this in terms of infotainment. So it's still the old infotainment system where you can find this like Fer uh, Ferrari, Mercedes inspired um, knob here to be able to choose. It's all pretty outdated, but to be honest, you can barely see it <laughs> when you're driving and you know, you're not buying this car for its infotainment system. So who cares? Uh, you do have some buttons, which is quite nice for your aircon heating Heating could be quite nice in winter. Don't really need it now, but uh, nice to have. For some reason, the rear view mirror controls, adjustment controls, are like front and center. I've never seen that so prominent. Please ignore also my bag and my hoodie right there. Um, seemed like the best place to put it. I didn't want to put it on the leather in the back because I didn't want to scratch it. Um, but yeah, look how prominent that is. Then you've got your PRND and engine start buttons here. So if I just put the ignition on you'll see all fully digital and you can kind of see it now but it's somewhat strategically done so it's under this bridge so that you don't get too much glare on the screen but when you are driving it is pretty hard to see what's going on on that screen and then you do have under here a little compartment again with a very classy aston martin um little strap and then <laughs> he's actually got a disposable camera in here very cool and leather Loads of beautiful details, obviously all carbon fiber. It is an awesome place to be. But what interests us the most is the drive. So off goes the cap, on goes the camera. Let's go for a POV drive. So you're on my head now, start the car up. There we go. Now GT mode. Um, oh, actually, first things first, let me put my sunglasses on because or else I'm not gonna be able to see anything if we start driving. So GT mode is kind of what the car will start in and it closes the exhaust valves and as the name indicates, it's just a more comfortable mode. Sport mode is what we're going to go into. And then I'm gonna to touch on the paddles and now I'm in manual. Really nice, big carbon fiber paddles. So we're good to go. We take the handbrake off, which is down here. And now we go for a cruise and hopefully you'll be able to hear what I'm saying because obviously there's gonna be a lot of wind. So I puts a mic on and it should hopefully help us but you never know in one of these and I won't be able to know until I get home later so fingers crossed now are we good we're good it is a very particular driving experience so first of all obviously the visibility is unreal you can see everything around you but I mean look at this on these roads with this view driving this car is just so special and it's not at all a car that you just feel like properly blasting in. It feels like a real Sunday, take it out and you don't need to go fast to get excitement out of it. Oh, 
Now it's got the 700 horsepower, so slightly detuned engine, V12 twin turbo engine from the DBS Superleggera, but it's then actually got the DB11's gearbox and various pieces from uh, the lineup, the Aston Martin lineup. So it's a bit of a mix and mash of different things in order to make it have its own character. The gearbox is just so that it's got a bit more of that cruising uh, character to it, but the engine, obviously, they wanted it to have a proper amount of power, which it does indeed have. It feels really nice. Now, you don't actually hear, you guys may be able to hear it a bit more than I do uh, because of the microphone, but I can't really hear the engine at all. I can basically just hear engine, uh, sorry, not engine noise, wind noise. Oh, and my sunglasses, oh God, I've got like, my eyes are tearing up so much. It's borderline dangerous without the helmet. It's probably best when you start going fast to have the helmet on because your eyes, even when wearing sunglasses, will start tearing up. Oh, what an experience though. I've got to pull these sunglasses down. I don't know if you can hear, but I know that on downshifts it does some pretty cool pops and bangs. I did actually separately put uh, GoPro on the exhaust so that you could hear that a little bit. So I'll put that clip now. like I am doing a million miles an hour. I'm just taking it in a little bit because it's quite something and I have no idea if you can hear me or not. But this is exactly, I guess, what Aston Martin were trying to do with this car. Obviously with it being like an homage to the DBR1, this is what race cars used to be like back in the day the race cars that you could also drive on the road. <laughs> they would be fully open and an absolutely bonkers experience. And that's what this is like. I mean, phew. I wonder how many of these will actually be driven long distances and things. I hope a few of them, because it is really nice to drive and it's easy to drive. It's not very intimidating. The fact that you've got the great visibility makes it fairly easy to just hop into and get used to. Double clutch gearbox, which is really nice also. It is rear wheel drive, so you need to be a little bit careful. You don't have four wheel drive there to kind of keep you in check. But yeah, feels just like such an event. And I know what a lot of the comments, and honestly, I thought this at first, is, is this really, a, you know, it's a million pounds, give or take. Now they're probably over a million pounds. They're definitely over a million euros in Europe. You know, but it is just based on uh, other cars in the lineup. But what makes this special is its rarity and just the way it makes you feel when driving it. It's it's so it's really a very special experience. Now I'm lucky enough to have driven a Monza, very different and kind of what you'd expect. I mean, this just has that Aston Martin character, whereas that has the Ferrari character, where you've got that crazy V12 sound. Which one would I have? It's hard to say, both feel very special. I think I would maybe actually go for the Monza, but they're another million pounds, I think, or something over this. So, you know, although if you're spending a million to a million and a half, you can probably spend two million, I guess. I mean, I don't know how it works in that kind of world, but I guess that's the way it is. But yeah, definitely such an experience. I'm almost lost for words. I don't really know how to describe it because it's so different to other cars that I'd usually review which uh, you're just talking about kind of the mechanical driving experience. But when you're driving this, you're almost not thinking about that too much. You're thinking more about the just overall slap in the face that you're getting by, from this car and mainly the wind. And that's what kind of dominates so much. It's not necessarily the engine or the way the gearbox feels or the steering, which actually feels surprisingly light. Um, None of that really is what's at the heart of this experience. It's kind of just the package and the overall feel of the car, 
which takes over and the rest almost comes second to that and you know you're getting this car for it to be just special and completely different to anything else you have in your collection probably uh, the people who have this this isn't the only car you're gonna have let me tell you that this is one of many that you're gonna have and it kind of ticks its own box yes the Elva and the Monza and the Sterling Moss are similar but I mean any of these will be able to give you this kind of feel and experience when you're when you're in them so oh, it's just awesome I mean massive thanks to Steph the owner um, and just good on him for letting this car be driven my pleasure to take it out to make sure the battery's okay and get the fluids running in the engine and just get the car getting some use because this is a piece of art as much as it is a car and often these things will just get stored away and being able to have it on the road like this and the amount of attention it gets is just crazy I mean people are <laughs> like just confused as to what is it and how are you driving that without a windscreen you do find yourself driving slightly differently like wanting to leave a bit more of a distance to the cars in front of you because you don't want to get a little stone pop up and hit you in the eye or the tooth or you're always a bit worried about whether a fly is just going to come and make out with you halfway through driving but yeah it is special I hope you can hear me I hope it's not just wind noise and I hope the camera angles okay and you know that feel when you're in a convertible and it just feels like the sky is yours and there's like unlimited headroom well times that by like 10 and that's how it feels being in here you're just completely out in the elements and just seeing that like leather glove box right there and this bridge and the carbon everywhere it just feels so so special what a car what an experience hopefully it comes across as a POV drive now I know that there's a tunnel up here so let's give it a little bit of acceleration in the tunnel see if we can hear it a bit more I don't know if it's got lift but it doesn't feel very low I haven't had to use the lift thus far okay here we go down into first oh the traction kicked in that's how you can feel the 700 horsepower and the rear wheel drive nature of it obviously it's quite a bit well it's actually not that much lighter than a dbs i think it's still 1.8 tons it's still a fairly heavy car let's go let's head down here into monaco way it's gonna get a lot of looks driving around monaco but yeah it is actually still a fairly heavy car it looks like it would be quite light but it's got that big big v12 engine and uh still weighs a decent amount no lift we'll go nice and slowly over this but yeah as i was saying when we were driving outside of town it's not intimidating it's not an imposing car to drive around town because it's not too big and you got this great visibility the it's got a different feel to the monza the monza really felt like you were just sat on the back of just a massive hood in front of you now i think the driving's now see about to get pretty uninteresting for you guys from here so I don't think there's much point I'm just gonna drive it back there's not much point keeping you guys on my head for the rest of this drive now we've had our fun now it's time to take the car home 